Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to Let's Try, sort of, Cities in Motion 2 European Cities. So Cities in Motion 2 is a transport management game. Uh, from screenshots it might look a lot like a city management game, like a SimCity, but you are dealing entirely with the transport layer. You're setting up buses, trolleys, trams, metros, and water buses. And you're just dealing with the transportation aspect of the city. However, you can sort of customize the city a bit because you can also build roads. We're gonna go right into that and take a look at what that looks like in a moment. Now, specifically, I'm here to talk about the uh, European Cities Expansion Pack. Now, the uh, this expansion pack doesn't really change the gameplay in any significant way. Um, it, uh, it does add some new buildings to try to add more of a European flair to the game, but mostly what it does is adds uh, three new maps, and we can actually go into the sandbox mode here and see them. They're excited about Dusseldorf, inspired by Liverpool, and inspired by Prague here. These are the three maps that come with this expansion. Now, they are a map, but they're also adding a new campaign as well, the Inspired by Europe campaign, where you start with We Love Tourists, which starts in Inspired by Liverpool, and then continues through there, and so you'll get different objectives and storyline missions and that sort of things as you play through. Um, if The City's Motion also comes with a variety of little DLC packs that you can pick up that add uh, new vehicles and... Um, some landmarks and that sort of thing. So if you are enjoying the game and you want some more variety, you can definitely do that. But all the DLC is definitely optional. And I'd say if you haven't played the game, even the expansion pack is optional to start off with. You just look for it when you want more content. One of the things I will say about Cities of Motion 2 is uh, they do support the Steam Workshop for custom maps. And in fact, if I go into the sandbox here, uh, you can find, uh, for example, this Toronto, Ontario city center map which I downloaded from the Steam Workshop, for example. I'm very excited to play it. I haven't gotten a chance to do it yet. I also downloaded this uh, this Copenhagen map here. And uh, this Reeve Delta map is, uh, I haven't tried it yet, but is actually a custom campaign here with custom objectives. And it actually sounds like it's going to be quite a bit of fun. So I'm looking forward to giving that a try. Anyway, I'm going to go into the uh, campaign mode for the Inspired by Europe We Love Tours. See you right after the cut. All right, and here we are in the city that is inspired by Liverpool. Now, as I said, this is sort of going to be a let's try. I love how there's the, the magma layer down there. Um, it's sort of going to be a let's try it's simply because playing this game, playing Cities in Motion is a very zen experience. It's kind of a slow paced and a very long term game. Uh, it can take you uh, quite a long time, several hours to beat any given scenario as you watch your city sort of grow and you double check your transport routes. And if you want something that's calm and interesting, it's definitely that sort of game um, but that's why I'm not going to be really playing through that much gameplay uh, per se so we've got a couple of missions right away we've got Annie Martins right here local entrepreneur she wants 15% uh, tourism for tourists so they want a certain amount of satisfaction for tourists that come to the city we can look at the different demographics in a second we got a secondary uh, mission right here which get a 55% wait so this is 55% reputation among tourists. Oh, sorry, this is 15% coverage of the city. So right now the city has no public transit whatsoever. Let's go ahead and pause the game. And so this one mission here is to simply cover 15% of the city with various transit routes. And then also ha let the population grow to 34,500. Um, there's a place somewhere where I can find out what the current population is. The city will grow kind of organically on its own, especially if all the various buildings and, and like businesses and whatnot are being serviced successfully. They will kind of grow on their own. You can also rush things by building some roads, which we'll look at uh, very soon. Um, and yeah, the reputation, you can see at a glance what a reputation is here and what the different demographics are. Blue collar, white collar, students, business person, pensioner, and tourists. And if we go into the data panel, we can actually see which buildings cater to different groups. For example, a tourist group over here. We can see some green and blue buildings. I believe the green buildings are sources of tourists, so those are hotels. And the blue buildings would be tourist sinks, or they're leisure activities is what they are, or leisure, depending on where you're from. Uh, and, and so this is things that interest tourists, for example, here. So are these all their apartment buildings, offices? Well, they're always homes. But I think they're homes that are a source of tourism as well. So they see them scattered a little bit. Yeah, so you can see there's different things that glow there. And so these are the things that if you cover these, you provide transportation to this, and it's good transportation. If tourists want to use your service and then have an enjoyable time using your service, then your reputation with them will go up. Also ticket prices and, and that sort of thing. So that's definitely going to be the theme of this scenario, for example. 
Uh, but of course, the main part of the game is still there in that you just want to provide good um, transportation infrastructure for the entire city to make everyone like you and also to make some money. So I did look at the base game briefly. I will do a, a quick little rundown of a few other things. So in this menu, we get our cash flow that we can look at. We can take out loans if we need some extra cash. We can control the employees' wages. And we can set ticket prices for our various services, which is here. So again, bus, trolley, tram. A trolley is basically a bus that runs on electrical wire. A tram, which is basically the same thing, except it runs on track, um, on roads only. You can't just build a, a rail off in the middle of nowhere. Uh, a metro, which is your subway type of thing, water bus, so that would obviously go on the water, so little little ferry rides kind of thing, um, and then this last group is the generic ticket. So what can happen, here you can see these are the price for a single line. This is if you're getting on a bus and you're going from point A to point B, you, um, you would pay this much, you would pay one dollar for example. And then you've got the one zone, so if we go into the construction tools and pick define zones, by default, the whole city will be yellow, one single zone. But what is quite nice to do is actually to paint, let's say we paint our downtown core here, a red zone. So now, you could buy a zone ticket for say just the red zone, and then you could travel anywhere within the zone on that one ticket, taking as many connections as you need to get from one place to the other. But if you want to transfer from one zone to the other, then you'll have to pay again. And in fact, if we go to the economy panel, so this is the one zone. So one line, one zone, and this would be a two zone pass. So to go from yellow to red, and here's the all zones pass. So you could further break it down by having, say this island here be a blue zone, uh, and then maybe this spot over here, along with this little nub of land over here, be the, uh, the green zone, and then leave this to be yellow, for example, and then you control that. Um, and also that's, these ticket prices here are just for a single service within that zone, but then you've got, also got the generic. This will get you anything. So for 450, you can buy a ticket that will get you absolutely anywhere in the city using any services and crossing any zone lines. You can also pay a monthly fee as well, so you can control those ticket prices. So that's under that screen, the data panel. Uh, there's a few useful things. Here's the, the list of companies because, of course, there can be some opponents. A variety of graphs for different stats that you can cover your entire screen with. And then a, I closed it accidentally. And then, oh yeah, the data map panel that we looked at before with the various demographic groups, traffic density, which is actually going to be a very important tool going on. And also our coverage map, which shows if we are covering the city via transit at all. And you can break it down by different types of transit as well, just to see um, how much you've got going on there. So we're gonna close that. And then we've got our tools and our transport panel. So the tool is where we actually build things. So we can build structures for various types of services. We've also got this landmark thing that we can build, Brandenburg Gate, Cologne Cathedral, the 30 St. Mary's Axe, but this is the Gherkin, right? Yeah, the famous London Gherkin, if I'm not mistaken. And what do we have here? The Elizabeth Tower and Westminster Palace. Uh, very commonly known, of course, as Big Ben. Big Ben being the bell inside of the uh, the Elizabeth Tower. So we've got those. And then you have different structures that you can build for different types of services. Some of them are shared. For example, the uh, bus and trolley stops. They're the same stops on both of them. If you build one, they can service both. And then you've actually got these buildings down here that service bus, trolley, and tram stops at the same time, which can save you a little bit of money if you're really using a multi-line thing. It's also good for making tra switchovers. I like to build trams on these avenues like this, and the reason I like to do it is because traffic is a massive problem in this game, as it is in any city, right? Realistically, s traffic is the number one problem that cities have to contend with and, and lay things out intelligently for. Um, and so one of the things that you're going to be like, oh, I can help improve traffic by running a bunch of buses. True, although the problem is, and this is this is sort of an issue, it's part of the gameplay that's been around since Sim Cities in Motion 1 and now in 2, is that buses and trolleys and trams are all traffic themselves. So the more buses you throw into the city, you could actually cause your own bottleneck, especially since they don't move very quickly and they tend to stop very frequently. So you've really got to be intelligent. The question, the, solving a traffic problem does not involve throwing more buses at things, but being more intelligent about it. And so one of the reasons I like trams is because, uh, so first you've got to build the tram track itself, and you can build it singly or doubly, you can see it here, so this is a double track, so it would build in both lanes here, 
or here, but you can see there's an avenue, so it would be on the other side. So it saves you by taking the double tool, it saves you time by building on both sides, or you can just do single and then build on one side and then on the other, and that's fine. But the thing with trams is you can run them in the middle of these avenues. So accepting the times that they cross intersections, they don't tie up traffic as much. So I really, really like to have these be the main backbone of my transportation because they don't they don't interfere with the flow of traffic quite as heavily, especially buses. Buses can really, really, really back things up. So we can run that down there. Oops, that's actually a mistake. Um, let me go and bulldoze that. I don't think there's an undo for that construction, which is slightly unfortunate. Um, then I'm just going to click here and then there just to create that connection and so on and so on and so on and so forth. And then at some point you do have to figure out how you're going to make your trams turn around by taking these roads. And it can be a little bit tricky because sometimes there's one-way roads. This is actually a two-way road, but the problem is we can't actually make um, a corner here. It's too sharp. We can, go from, uh, we can go from here to here very easily, for example. We can't come back the other way. So it takes a little bit of thinking to how you're going to resolve those things. But it's very fun. That's why I say it's not necessarily the most exciting game to watch play on video. Um, although I'm considering doing maybe like a time lapse or something like that. But it is very, very pleasant to play on your own. However, the frustrating part will come from just insane traffic bottlenecks. And here on this Liverpudlian, Liverpudlian? I think that's what it is, Liverpudlian? I don't know, Liverpool map, inspired map, uh, this particular interchange will be just miserable. And I'm willing to bet that if this exists in real life, it's probably where there is massive traffic bottlenecks as well. Um, and, and it is a big problem because, again, any traffic bottleneck will really affect your buses. So I like to use buses to go between regions. So I might have some local bus service here, for example. You know, I might do that, or I might do more trolleys or trams or whatever. You know, I could even set up a metro. But I quite like the idea of having buses that go from one sort of city center to another. And maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should get metro tunnels to go between the two. In fact, I probably should, but they're very expensive. Um, so now, all of a sudden, these buses will get backed up by these same sort of on and off ramps as everything else. Now, one of the things you may have noticed that this point if we zoom in despite the fact that this is inspired by liverpool and unless i'm mistaken liverpool is in england right and in england don't they drive on the left side of the road yeah so these are inspired by and in fact some people will also point out uh different things like some traffic markings and things may or may not be european and especially depending on what country you're from obviously europe is not one big monolithic essence they each have uh, or entity Every country has their own sort of standards for how they deal with uh, street painting and street signs and, and all that sort of thing. So it's inspired by in terms of layout. Presumably, I don't know, I didn't do my research and check a map of Liverpool before starting this. But, um, you know, presumably it's inspired by that. Uh, in terms of running time, our, our uh, like processor and frame rate and all that, I haven't had... Uh, uh, too many problems, even with the city growing and quite a lot of traffic on the streets. I haven't really run any real metrics, but it seems to run relatively smoothly. Obviously, it's not simulating quite as much as something like a SimCity would, but it is a relatively large area, and there are a lot of traffic elements. I suppose I should unpause and go in fast-forward mode, and then we can actually start to see some of these problems pile up. just realized it was paused there. Another problem I have noticed on this particular map, another bottleneck, I should say, uh, has to do with, I believe, this area here. No, not here. Where? Where, where, where am I thinking? No, not that way. Ah, uh, over this way. Because, if I'm not mistaken, at some point, this merges into... Oh, I might be wrong. Or I might just be disoriented. Oh. Oh. No, it's up here. There we go. This place. Oh, this is such a disaster. All right. So this little town here, whatever this town is supposed to be, the main road coming into this town, this is a two-lane road. Now, there's a lot of commuters coming from this town here into the main sort of city center over here. And so they're all taking this simple two-lane road, right? Two-way. It's not a one-way street or anything like that. Two-lane road. If we back up, at some point, we will hit expressways, which is what this is here. And now, so in these expressways, these are... These are two lanes going in one direction, right? This is effectively a one-way going north, and this is effectively a two... or a one-way going sort of south on this map. But... Because the cars know that they will have to get in the right lane here. Because of that, the, the traffic AI has all these cars, and you can see it a little bit clearer if I go into to 
normal speed, all these cars will only drive in the right hand lane. And as we let the, the simulation run further and further and further, you will get massive car backups into the right lane of both of these roads. Now, to a certain extent, that behavior is slightly, you know, AI fail, sort of, but ultimately the real problem is that this gets bottlenecked and there's nothing you can really do. And you can already see, like, the cars are just piling up more and more and more and more. And to a certain extent, your job is to, like, resolve this. Now, yeah, sure, it would be great if everyone just started, like, look, look at this. You know, you've got this four-lane avenue plus another two-lane and another two-lane all feeding into this two-lane bottleneck. So part of your job as a city designer, yeah, if you could throw buses at the problem or something like that, and like, ah, oh, use the buses instead of the cars. Well, yes, they will to a certain extent. But part of the problem, of course, is your buses will also get caught up in this, which will make people hate the buses, which means they won't take the buses, which means they'll keep using the cars, which means the problem will continue to persist. The right solution is to actually start building new roads, which you can totally do in this game. And you've got quite a few options. This is the, the, the regular road option, which ranges from a two-lane regular road all the way to an eight-lane road where the, well, an eight-lane road here, you know, goes two ways. Four lanes going one way, four going the other. And here's also eight lanes, but with the outermost lane being reserved for buses. So that's what this sort of reddish tone is. These are, so this road here, for example, would be entirely reserved for buses, which actually opens up some really cool ideas in terms of optimization. Looks like we picked up another quest here. Build one li line to Rothhouse over here. Okay, so there's a quest I can do. Uh, if I build a line to there and transport 90 people with it, I'll get a reward. And the, the uh, rewards, especially early on, they tend to uh, really help you out considerably. So what do you do about this problem? So you're not just a mass, mass transit engineer. You build these roads. So yeah, we've got the regular roads. We've got one-way roads, which follow basically the same rules as the other one, except obviously be one way, with the max being four lanes going in one direction. We have avenues, which are basically the same thing, but split in the middle and expressways. Now, what is going to be the difference between an expressway and a regular road? Or say, a one-way road, right? That's really what it is, because the expressways are always one way. What's the difference? Well, it's possible cars can travel faster on it. I don't know how the speed limit affects things or not. I, I can tell you that buses go f slower than cars, though, because you will frequently see a situation where you've got um, a bus, like, going, and the cars are just, like, piling up behind it, and the bus just doesn't go that fast, which I guess is entirely reasonable. So it's possible that the expressways let you go faster, but there's an interesting difference that goes beyond that, in that if I go and build a regular road, let's say over here, all right, let's extend a regular road that comes out this way, and sort of loops around, and does that. But right, I finish the road, and if we watch, buildings will start to pop up right away. You can expand your city whenever you want very quickly and very easily simply by building more roads, which is one of the ways that you can increase the population of your city. Obviously, this will increase the traffic density and so on, like, you know, just traffic demand on your roads. So you want to do that intelligently. And then on the flip side, if you build an expressway, they will not spawn any buildings. So let's say we pop out an expressway that goes over there. No buildings will appear around here. So this lets you build those without pumping up your um, your population base. And also just generating more traffic on there. People might be pulling in and out of these buildings, which would be no good at all. So, yeah. So, when you're looking at these scenarios, you're not only looking at the mass transit, you're also looking at the road. Now, one of the downsides to building these roads, like, look, look, look how far it's backed up, right? And again, I, I feel like, to a certain extent, it's entirely reasonable. Let's go and uh, use the bulldoze tool here. Let's blow up this road. Kaboom which will reset a lot of the traffic and we'll get it to disappear. And instead, what we're going to do is drag out, say, an avenue over here. And let's, let's go big or go home. Let's go with a six-lane avenue with bus lanes. We'll drag out the road sort of like this. Now, there we go. And if we double-click, it'll complete the road. And if we come back over here, the one problem I seem to have... Hey, I got an achievement for this. Um, is I can't, no, I can't bowl those little sections. Sometimes I feel like you can't, and I haven't really figured out why. So then what we're going to do is grab expressway, two-lane expressway, pull it off of here, and connect it vaguely there, and then also pull it this way. And that should work. Hopefully I haven't made something that is completely defective. Let's go in normal speed. How did I... Oh, Avenue, I... I actually should have just used expressways for all this, but okay, it's fine. So avenues, so we'll get buildings that pop up there, but I think that people should be able to pass, pathfind through here. And I think that ultimately we will have fewer traffic problems. 
I guess it's fine. We can have bus stops running up and down here. Oh, that's why there's no more traffic. I forgot to connect the other end. I guess I should do that. Can I just finish it off with an avenue? I wonder. Um, what's the one I'm looking for? The six-lane avenue. Yeah, not enough space. If I build it out straight and then curve... No. Now, I may not want to do it, actually, this way. What I may want to do... And let's switch back to the expressway here. And let's split off the one way with three plus a bus route. Is I may just want to, like, split up my traffic so that not everyone's coming in and out of the city in the same place. Let's say this is going to be the inn. Hmm. Let me try it from the other side. Oh, now it's going to go the wrong way, though. Just realizing. Because the direction matters. Hmm. I mean, this is a pretty wonky intersection to come in on. What if I actually bulldoze a little bit of the corner here? Did you let me do that? Did you do it? Actually, yeah, let's bulldoze that whole road. It's fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, one way. Lovely. I like it. And then let me... Ooh, not in this direction. I actually want to go in the opposite direction. From this bad boy over here. I'm going to pull off, click, and sort of curve around in a very sort of nice and sexy way. And can I actually just do it as a merge? And I think regardless, there's going to be quite a few lights there. But this might be a better set of traffic. I don't know. I'm sort of just doing this on the fly. And oh, I was using one-way roads again instead of um, expressways. But we've got traffic flowing again. And so I'll come back to this in a, in a few days and see if this has improved traffic. Certainly, you can see people are using all the lanes now. Also, as a bonus, my buses will never get tied up by traffic on these main sort of arterial roads, for example. They might still get tied up inside of the city, but this should improve the flow of things considerably. Now, I did spend a lot of money doing that, a huge chunk of money, and you don't make money back from these roads. You make money back from your mass transit stuff, but it, it you know, it all ties in together. Anyway, um, <laughs> I haven't even talked about the, the actual tools here. I do have an older video uh, demonstrating the actual sort of, you know, um, actual mass transit aspects. I think this might be a good place, though. Let's go ahead and, and make a simple bus route, and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. We'll make a large bus depot here. Is it worth a lot? Yeah, you know what? This is a big enough area. We'll set up a large bus depot. We'll get rid of that church. Um, set that down there. And then we're going to set up a series of bus stops. I'll use, like, a nice fancy bus stop right here. So this will be the, the main sort of uh, place where people can get on this bus to go to the other city. So we're going to go in over here, and then we're going to go quite far away into the city center. So people come in this way. Look at like, more backed up traffic, which is certainly going to be a problem. Um, and what we'll do is we'll let people off maybe right here. There. It's going to be a very simple route. And in fact, it's so long, I suspect that buses are going to have maintenance problems partway through. But, you know, it's going to do fine for this particular example. So we're going to create a new bus line. We're going to add stops. We have to start with a depot, which I'm going to start there. And then I'm going to set this stop. Then I'm going to go way over here in my other city, set this stop. And then I'm going to end back at the original depot. And then they'll continue that cycle. So then right away, the depot is complaining that there's not enough buses. It tells me this line is going to need six buses to service entirely. Now, if some of the buses get caught up in traffic, they might you might still miss a, a launch um, if you only have the six. So you might want to go to seven or even eight to accom uh, sort of accommodate that. On the other hand, it also means that your buses are basically just adding to the bottleneck. So you probably, if you find yourself going to like eight of six, for example, it probably means you've got a bigger problem to worry about, mostly dealing with some sort of road infrastructure somewhere, and you want to mess with that. We've got our choice of buses here, going all the way to the fanciest double-deckers. They do cost more, but they have considerably more capacity um, to do. I think I might, for the long trip, I quite like the Evo Urban, uh, because they like they require the least maintenance out of any of them. They're able to go a little bit further um, on, on their maintenance level. Uh, they also None of them have great acceleration, but at least it's not poor, so they're going to be better for the highway driving. So we'll go and uh, select them, and we'll grab six of those and purchase that. So now my buses should start to leave. And if I unpause over here, we should... Oh, I didn't actually unpause. There we go. Let's try that again. Close all these things. You can see the route on the uh, 
the map if you want to toggle them off that's what these little eyeball icons are from you've also got them here and this icon here will toggle all the bus lanes on and off but we'll leave it on for now so through a bus this one probably the one that was late and here was the next one due right after that i can adjust the uh, schedules on these lines considerably we've got a timetable here weekday morning rush evening rush weekend night custom and i can say what the interval uh, is right now they're leaving every two hours um we can make that uh, potentially longer especially at first you're not going to have as much uh, demand for things um so you can really turn it down quite a bit okay let's go up to speed three and actually i'm going to click that click this to follow the bus and just turn around and we can see how the bus is doing so there's a little bit of traffic on the road let me go and turn off the route so we can actually see a little bit clearer a little bit of stop and go over here in this sort of inner road that we've got going on. It should be a lot faster once we get onto the avenue. There we have it. And we'll see. We should, we should go into the bus lane. And we do. Fantastic. So there'll be no interruption. I don't think that we actually need the bus lanes at this point. And I probably spent way too much money. Is there someone driving in the bus lane? Who the hell is that? SUV. Well, it might... Oh, and there's another one behind it. It might be a carpool lane, but no. SUV sports car? Come on. That can't be legal. And they're refusing to pass me as well. There we go. Everyone's using both lanes over here, which is fantastic. Condition is dropping. Again, you know, like many of these games, these are simulations. They're approximations of things. So one hour in here represents, in, a, in one sense, considerably more time. In another sense, considerably less. Look at the stop and go. How much? Oh, that is terrible. That is simply awful. We clearly would have to do something about this because now our buses are going to get caught there. And, you know, you're going to want to do that. Now, I should, if I recall, have a save. Uh, yeah, let's grab this one here. Uh, it might take a little bit of time to load or not because we're on the same map. Uh, where I've resolved some, if not all, of these traffic problems. Uh, and I have a, a system that's going relatively well. Come on, fat boy, get in there. You can do it. There we are. So at this point, I've got a system. This is the same map as before, but I've got uh, 12 bus lines. I've got six tram lines. I've got one trolley line. I need to complete that for a quest. Right now, the actual lines themselves are hidden. Let's go and uh, expose them all so we should see them. So everything in red, these are tram lines. So they service my main city over here. And we've got some blue bus lines that are connecting the cities one to another. So I've got a little bit of one there. This purple, I believe, is yeah, the one trolley line that's going around this town, mostly providing local service. And then over here, you can see I didn't, in this game, I did not deal with the, uh, the two-lane problem here. However, um, by splitting it off here, I believe I mostly resolved the bottleneck. You can see I still did the same thing here where I sort of killed this intersection. And so the idea was to make it, make it so that, you know, yeah, they have to merge into a single lane kind of going north at this point. I don't know if I'm facing north or not, but, you know, forward on the screen. But then they can sort of split off, and more importantly, they can get off this highway uh, leading into the town in a couple of different ways very quickly. So the traffic splits into two uh, and, and doesn't bottleneck quite as much. So I think it mostly does okay. So here I've got a fair amount of local bus service. Uh, the people over here are not quite covered yet, which I'll want to do something about that soon. And then uh, this bus stop always gets tons of people waiting. Bus line 8, that's my intercity bus line. And if I hit fast forward, these, this number should probably grow, grow considerably. Although it's 5 o'clock in the morning, so maybe a little bit less so. It's on a Monday. All the work commuters should pile in there soon. The bus just got picked up. Eh, we could follow that one. I thought the numbers would uh, shoot up quite a bit more than that. But apparently not. My vehicles are overcrowded. I am allowing up to 50% overcrowding on my vehicles. Oh, I'm centered on the wrong thing. Give me a bus. There we go. That's not the overcrowded one, but that'll do. Center on you. There we are. Thank you. And we can follow this one into town. And see what's going on there. Completed quite a few of the initial quests. Now, uh, right now, the tourists hate me, which is a shame. Um, I've got all the coverage I need. I'm just waiting for the population growth to finish. And mostly, I think at this point I might restart the city having learned some mistakes. Now, Cities of Motion 1 was the same way. Uh, playing through this scenario, or the campaign, I ended up restarting the campaign quite a few times to, you know, see how, how things work. I do find it's easier to make money 
in Cities Motion 2. Although when I first did a Let's Try of it, I found it quite difficult. I don't know if it's been patched or if I've simply, you know, gotten better or learned things. Certainly don't start with buses. Do try to get those tram lines in an avenue and it seems to work well. Anyway, um, I enjoy the game. It's not for everyone, I don't think, because it is really slow paced and, oh, this is actually going to the other town. It is really slow paced and quite meticulous, but um, really enjoyable if you like doing transport type things. And I do think it's a beautiful looking game. Again, it's, uh, some of the, the European inspired stuff is to me very loose um, you know in terms of what side of the road you drive on and a few of the extra markings but um, I don't know I like I like cities motion I'm happy this game exists and so there you have it you can find it uh, I'll, I'll have a link down below you can certainly find it on Steam and uh, many other places see you next time folks bye bye Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, leave a comment. Did you know I read every single comment someone leaves on my video? That's insane. Why would I do that? I don't know, but I'll read yours.